action. I'm so sick of race baiters and casket chasers in the black community. All they do is use black trauma to go make a dollar. And I'm like, hey, Dr. Umar, you done got $700,000 from the black community. And what you do? You built a school? What nah, a school at? He waiting for, uh, you get him some more. He wants some more money. Hey, uh, there's a there's a content creator named The Funky Academic. I, I had him, on, he was my Facebook friend for a minute until he disagreed with my politics. And so the black man unfriended me. <laughs> black people out here on some foolishness, man. When As soon as they don't agree, they they, they want to put you in a, in a coon bucket. The funky academic, he is married to a white woman. He has biracial children. And all he says is black power, black power. How much black power can you have with a white woman? I don't disagree. I think you have a whole lot of black power. Look, look, look. If you want to talk about the dating market, right? If the majority of black women are overweight, am I supposed to regulate my or, or just only participate in that market? I feel what you're saying. We can't be all around here wanting Lizzo's. I'm just like, if you don't, if you're not willing to comply to what my structure is, then what am I supposed to do? Hey, find you something new. Like I'm pro black, but I think every man is supposed to procreate. Absolutely. Every pro black man that. should procreate. And if if we understand by the numbers that 75 percent of black women will never get married. Is that me or is that them? That's going to be on them. Because <laughs> in the sexual market, uh, Spanish women like me, Mexican women like me. I mean, that's the same thing. Uh, Asian women like me, white women like me. I feel that. And then if I do not subscribe to say that Lizzo was a perfect 10, then all of a sudden black women tell me that I, I don't. Who around here saying Lizzo was a perfect 10? Black women. What? Black women. Since when? I mean, she's a perfect round circle. Oh, you know yeah. She looked like the, the zero <laughs> of the team, but she ain't no one zero. I ain't even trying to drag Lizzo. I'm not trying to drag black women. I'm all for black male empowerment. I'm all for male empowerment. I'm all for women who act like they got some sense. I'm all for people who got some sense. Straight up. Hey, so look. So I hit up the funky academic, Mr. Irony Ose Frank Pong. And so I'm like, hey. Because he's a brilliant man. What's his name again? Irami Ose Frankpong. His father is an African. His mother is an American. And he's... Uh, Why a... he got a Chinese name? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Feng Pong. Hey, so I got him to comment on one of my videos. But I'm like, man, I can tell that he doesn't do the business of YouTube. Like, he's a he creates content, but he's not a content creator. Okay, I feel that. Hey, black male content creators, if you really want to be impactful on YouTube, you have to understand the business of YouTube. Absolutely. You it, got, it ain't no just post stuff and then let it let, let things fly. You got to put more into it than that. They throw stuff on the internet and just pray. I pray it hits. I pray it hits. Man. You got to study the algorithm. You got to do more than just pray to God. Bro, I know that you look at analytics when you... When you... Absolutely. I stay on them. Stalker family is definitely in the building, right? Absolutely. We here. The, over a thousand subscribers, eighty-eight percent of channels will never get a thousand subscribers. So that means you're in the twelve percent of content creators. It feels kind of good. I hey, never even thought about the numbers of it, but uh, having a thousand subscribers—that's that's pretty pretty doggone good. And uh, did white supremacy stop you? No, <laughs> they tried to. I mean, it's a lot of man. I'm, I'm gonna say this. I'm not even worried about white people. I'm more concerned with the black people who don't agree with what I'm saying because they got all this stuff that they come at us with. Uh, like I say, they put you in the coon bucket. They call you Uncle Sam when Uncle being Uncle Sam doesn't even make sense to what they're trying to refer to. Uh, they say a lot of things. If I do not align with black ideology, somehow I'm not black. They put they'll pull your black card real quick. I ain't got no black card, man. Be <laughs> before before I'm a black man, I'm a man. I, yeah. Yeah. Before I'm a man, I'm a human being. Mm -hmm. And so I'm out here in America, the most powerful nation in the whole history of the world. And I'm trying to make sure that I establish a media company to advance black people. And you look at me and tell me that I'm not doing a good job. I don't think being pro, I'm just directing all your stuff to black people is beneficial anyway, because uh, that's a quick way to go out of business. If I... When we started off, I started talking about uh, the dating market. Mm -hmm. And so if we're if black people are 13 percent of the total population, black women are half of that. So it's fucking like 7 percent of the total population. And then out of that 7 percent, 4 percent of those people are obese. So I'm supposed to regulate myself to only 4 percent of women in all of America. Nah, nah. You'd be lucky if you find one black, uh, a black woman. And uh, I have been that fortunate. To find one who's not overweight, uh, actually take care of herself. Who loves God. Loves God. Who, and that's a big thing. Who, that, loves, who loves God and loves her children. Absolutely. There's a there's an order in life, man. Mm -hmm. God, man, woman, 
children. Straight up. And so if you're not, of, if, if me as a man, if I'm not of service to God, then I can't serve nobody. It's all about servitude, man. And a lot of people, they offer self. When God will directly tell you that your neighbor is, it should be more important than you. The, you two, should... the two greatest commandments is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And number two is to love your brother just as yourself. Absolutely. So I, we kind of lost out here. We absolutely lost because I put myself before God. I put myself before my brother. And it's handicapping the black community. Mm -hmm. And instead of acknowledging that I'm not holding myself accountable for my behavior, I say it's white supremacy. Oh, we're going to blame whatever we can. It's everything but us. So I reach out to my brother, Irami Osei Frank Pong, the funky academic. Does he return my, my messages? Hell no, he unfriended me. In return? The gentleman <laughs> unfriended me. And I'm not in the business of trying to drag no black person, but yeah. I think black accountability matters. He's a black creator in America. And I'm like, hey. If he's so pro-black, why wouldn't he want to work with you? Because he's also an intellectual. He's an elitist. He has a master's degree. He's working on his PhD. And he looks at me. I ain't shit but a motherfucking convict to him. But you a content creator, so really y'all on the same level. Man, I could, he, he used the exact same thumbnail for every single video. And if you don't understand, when you watch Netflix, when you watch YouTube, if the thumbnail isn't banging, you ain't clicking. Straight up. It's been like that since the beginning of time, even before internet. Like, uh, movies and all of that stuff, they're all thumbnails. When I go to Blockbuster, when I used to go to Blockbuster yeah, when yeah, it existed. Yeah. Way back in the day. You walk through the building yeah. and you pick the, the joint, man. Depending on how intriguing the, the cover of the uh, the movie was. Hey, as a content creator, I'm a, a audio engineer. I'm a videographer. <sighs> I'm a graphic designer. I'm an anal I study analytics. Uh, that, like say it's so many it, it's so many lanes to this that you have to learn on your own if you want to be successful. And that's why a lot of people fail. Hours a day just to create a short. One short. <laughs> One. Days out of the week just to create now, one I video. Now, I will say this. There is a difference between just creating a short and actually creating one that's actually going to do something. All of your last videos have been like 2,000 plus. Your last Absolutely. six videos, 2,000 people watching the things that you have to say because you have a message. It, I mean, and it's all in the target that you're going at. It has to be some kind of strategy behind all of this. You just can't get out there and just start doing stuff. I just believe that I have a message. And if I use my real lived experience, that you, then you might be able to relate. Absolutely. And I think most black people are conservative people. They don't want to say it. But behind all of that foolishness that they believe, most of them are. I have nothing in common with anyone in the LGBTQ plus community except for the fact that we're human beings doing the best that we can to exist. And I'm not going to sign on to that foolishness. I'm not. Look, I believe that you have the ability to do whatever you want to do. But I don't think that I'm supposed to impose my will upon you. I feel like this. What's up? I'm not signing on to anything that goes against the things that I believe. So I, I, I can say you can do whatever you want to do, but like you said, don't don't have me or expect me to agree with it or go with it like it's all normal. It's not. I get angry because I believe that I don't think that the LGBTQ community it equates to being black because I was born this color. I can't change it. I came out yeah, the womb this yeah. way. And they want to make it human rights when it's not a human right. That is a privilege to be in the alphabet community. Hey, I can I can, like I equate uh sexuality to eating like some people choose to be vegans some people choose to be vegetarians mm -hmm. that's a preference right a but choice I, I guarantee you if we out there in the middle of nowhere and i gotta go i go kill a boar you finna eat because you hungry absolutely i guarantee you that if you choose to be a broke wrist i guarantee you if if you had to it was on a desert island and it's a woman and a man y'all finna do the nest oh yeah Without questions asked. So there's no reason to pretend these things. And so being a black person in America, I don't think that it's, I'm not supposed to impose my lived experience on nobody else. Yeah, yeah. Because nobody cares. Nobody cares. I'm a black man in America, and I understand that that's, that comes with disadvantages. But why would anyone try to help me? I, I even remember when being a part of the alphabet community, you didn't even know what they were. Like, they would just walk around like normal people, but now they want to kiss in public. They want to hold hands. They want to be different genders and all kind of stuff. 
I don't understand what's going on. Unless I walked around in a hijab, like a, a Muslim woman or something, you know you I'm would, black. Exactly. <laughs> Unless you started talking and, and you spoke that native language. Unless I'm Clayton Bixby and I walk around in a, in a, a, a clan mask, you know that I'm a black man. <laughs> And so when I try to reach out to other black content creators and get to the root of how we uh, impact society at large in a positive way, and you ignore me because I don't have your same intellect or I'm not in the exact same social class as you, I'm like, are you pro-black or are you just an elitist trying to... Uh, you, you, you out here playing games is what you're doing. Race baiter, casket chaser, man. Straight up. Just like Ben Crump them. Race baiter, casket chaser. Just like Al Sharpton them. Just like Dr. Umar. Straight up, sister, and, sister, sister. Then all he be saying is sister, sister, like he's T and tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I, look, I have, I only have two sisters in the whole history of the world. Okay. Yeah. And so those are whenever a black man or any man says, "Hey, sister," and your agenda is to get into their pants, I'm like, "Hey, are you incestuous or what?" I think so. <laughs> I know it sounds horrible. You screaming sister to a person that you're trying to bang, and I understand the arguments that we. That's my sister in the struggle. What struggle? I don't know what struggle they're talking about. The cap, the capitalist struggle. Like all you doing is trying to make more money on the black grift. Because all he does is get more and more money. So how? What? What struggle is he referring to? I don't want to beat up no black man, but all these black men are taking my real lived experiences and they going to make a dollar off of Absolutely. it and then act like they don't know me. They, they, they don't. They that that man raised a million dollars. He ain't built not now school. He keep talking about it though. And if your agenda, so going back a little bit, uh, the funky academic, Mr. Irami Ose Frempong, he said, if you, and I really appreciate him for this, he said, if you don't have a political agenda for men between the ages of 18 and 25, then you don't care about black people. Mm, what's his political agenda? But I'm saying, if you don't care about the fathers of the children, then you don't care about the children. That's, that's real. I mean, I think that's so powerful. I can't come to your daughters and say, I want to help you and while you live in poverty. Nah, because first <laughs> off, I'm going to be looking at you crazy. Why are you talking to my Why, children? Exactly. Get Why your, do you, you need to be talking to me and not my kids? You got an agenda for my children, but you but don't you got no agenda for me. That sounds like uh, what is LeBron James. That, that sounds like the United States government. <laughs> they have an entire program called WIC, Women, Infants, and Children. Where's the daddy? They don't want the daddy in the picture. You got a whole political agenda to feed a child, and the child needs his father more than life itself. But you won't, man, all the statistics say that if a child doesn't have their father, then they're going to fail at life. That's why the society that we live in in 2023 is how it is. LeBron James was raised by a single mother, and he has no understanding that all those coaches he's had in his life, those were male. No, those were his fathers. Those were positive male figures. Absolutely. But ain't no man ever going to love no child more than he loves his own children. Nah. He, he, he'll, he'll act like he do. He uh he'll do things that make you think he does, but ah, nah. you you want your daughters to be either equal or more successful than you. Absolutely. And so you're gonna sacrifice everything you have to do that. Everything. Those men who are in LeBron James's life, they were willing to do whatever they could because they saw a financial reward. And they probably got it. This man is yes because they it's a call it an investment. And so when I just I want to just really break down just what it what it means to be black in America, like I think it means to be powerful. It should mean that, but it seemed like all black men just want to be women. Black men are supposed to be degenerates. Black men are supposed to be poor. Black men are supposed to be feminine. And all these things are acceptable to the black community. But as soon as I be a powerful black man, as soon as I want to raise my family the way that I see fit, then all of a sudden it's toxic masculinity. Oh, yeah. I'm pro-white. Mm -hmm. I'm a white supremacist. You're conservative. Like, I don't even see what's wrong with being a conservative. That's what that's what everything was built on. Conservative values, family, uh, husband, wife, children. It, it, all of these things that we are trying to write off are the things that were the foundation of this. That's the foundation of all society, man. And for you to ignore that, there is it's impossible to have. I think they look at Wonder Woman and they say Wonder Woman came from uh, the Amazonian queens yeah, and yeah. it's all Amazonians. I say, where them daddies at? <laughs> Ain't none. Ain't none. They trying to make it to where the woman is just as powerful as the man when <laughs> that is not the case. Men and women are not equal. Hey, Amazonia must have a sperm bank in the center of it as a capital. Uh, something. <laughs> they how, gotta, 
<laughs> they got some uh some, some, something over there that they impregnating themselves with. How y'all procreate this this fallacy, this thing? I I don't know. Maybe they're dinosaurs. They're like uh half frogs or something. You know, amphibians can. Well, all the men that they killed, they probably took all their sperm and they froze it, put it in a sperm bank. We trying to live out comic book lives instead of accepting their actual biological reality. And that's destroying America. Mm. And I'm asking black Americans to, hey, you don't live in Africa. Your grandmama didn't live in Africa. Your great, great, great grandmama didn't live in Africa. No ties to Africa whatsoever. I'm an African. I'm an African. African American. <laughs> I'm gonna put a hyphen, I'm a hyphenated American. And then when I laugh at you, you get offended at me. But I'm like, bro. You don't even have the respect for yourself to accept the place that you live at. I when they tell me they African American, I I'd be like, tell me your show me your lineage. They they don't have none. <laughs> they, even if they did, they don't know it. So how can you automatically assume just because I have black skin that you were from Africa? For me, like to live in this delusion, the way that we act as black folks, the way that man, get mad at me. Get mad at me. The way that black women act. They want to buy someone else's hair. They want to put on someone else's eyelashes. They want to wear someone else's fingernails. And they cover their face with all types of shit. You are worse than a transgender person. You are. I think you're promoting it. Because even like transgender people understand that they're not what they want to be. And they aspire to do that. You're doing everything in your power to look different. Yeah. And that, 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 it makes me angry. Because I would love to love the natural born American woman. But you don't even want to love yourself. Man, you wake up and you wake up next to that person. They look like a whole nother person. If I reject all the makeup and all the wigs and all the bull job, you tell me I don't love women. But if more men made that a standard, I'd blame men. If men made that more of a standard for a woman to take all that foolishness off and be her true self, then I believe women would be more inclined to do so. I absolutely positively agree. But men are such third, like all they, they, they're so hungry for some coochie. Yeah. And I'm like, man, your purpose and your principles have to come above coochie. Absolutely. But you, you'll you sacrifice your belief system to go get a piece of vagina, and then you get mad at the woman leaving you. She going to do that. You ain't got no value You, you have nothing. You you bring nothing to the table. She can go get a doggone uh, uh, a dildo or something and do the same thing you're doing. You see where I stay at, bro. I live in the projects. Hold on, man. Like Living in absolute poverty it is a traumatic experience, but I have a belief system. They, some some young boys stole my uh my woman's breast pump. What? Some young boys stole. I know they did not know that it was a breast pump. There was a box outside my door, and they stole my box from my door, and it was a breast pump for my black child. How about that? <laughs> that oh man, God. Dog. And so I have empathy because I know living in poverty that you want to do anything that you can to get a dollar. But when you're making a dollar at the expense of my family. Like, I got to hold you accountable. Once I would have found out that was a breast pump, I would have brought that back. But then they have to deal with me because they know I live here. All these, I've been here for four years. All these young people know that I live here. And so that offends me that these little uh, people would would, yeah, dis, would, yeah. would, would steal from me. Mm -hmm. And I'm not supposed to say that these young black men are stealing from a black man because I'm not supposed to per perpetuate the negative stereotype that young black men steal. But if it's real, then forget how people feel. I'm telling you the truth. My real lived experience, I can't hold my own people accountable because white supremacy made those young boys come and steal a breast pump. Everybody a victim. Everybody is a victim. And this in, in this ideology, from the framework, from the Dr. Martin Luther King, all those people, they wanted to be whole men. Now, instead of being a whole man, you want to be a black man. <laughs> no other values but being a black man. I'm a black man. And being a black man means that white supremacy has stopped me from actualizing myself. I'm like, hold on, man. You, we have to be men and hold ourselves accountable for being men. If white supremacy was so, so so prevalent as people say it is, there wouldn't be black people in the positions that they are in now. Well, so when you just, I, I don't disagree with you, but simultaneously, you look at the numbers, they created a system where if you're in the top 10% of your class, then you can go to a white, predominantly white institution. Mm -hmm. And so we have a bunch of black folks who went through predominantly white institutions while they left 90% of black folks behind. I feel that. I, I'm not saying it don't exist. What I'm saying is it, 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 it's not a bigger factor as people make it out to be. My position is that we can't allow it to be. We're men. Yeah, yeah. yeah stand up. Stand for something. We have to go hunt something. We have to go take something down. We have to take our power. 
because ain't ain't no other group of men gonna be like, oh man, the, the history just held you down, and I so I feel sorry for you. I feel sorry for you. The you moment, my brother. The moment you feel sorry for me, then I know I'm not no man. You looking exactly. like I'm some type of bitch or yeah, a child yeah, or something. Yeah, and I'm yeah. not your bitch. Dear America, black men are not your bitches. Dear black men, stop acting like bitches. Please. And I know that might be offensive to you. They but- gonna treat you like whatever you act like. If you ain't got no balls, then they gonna treat you like you got a coochie. And so as content creators, we have the ability to tell our own story. And I'm so glad that you're telling your own story for your family because your story matters. Absolutely. And I'm going to tell it. I don't care what you call me. And you can tell me my breath look like it stank. You can tell me I got a bald spot. You, I don't care what you tell me. I'm still going to tell the truth. We didn't had black elites and black intellectuals tell my black story for the last hundreds of years. And I'm like, hey, you're going to stop co-opting my story. I'm going to tell my own story, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm let me benefit off my story. Hey, Dr. Umar, you got a, a PhD? Have a conversation with me so we can discuss how we help impoverished black Half folks. these folks don't even know what it's like to be in the positions that we're in. They're so far up there, like a Barack Obama, they're so far up there that they what they're, the, the things that they're spitting are just things that they heard before. They don't really understand what it is to be impoverished. If you don't go to work every day, you don't have a place to live and your children don't have food to eat. This exactly. Is a fact. That's a fact. Hey, I live in the projects. And if I do not fight for my family, if I don't fight for my woman, if I don't show up, man, I'm going to be here forever. Yeah. Because <laughs> ain't nobody going to show up for you. Ain't nobody finna show up for me. Yeah. Ain't nobody finna come knock on my door and say, I got something for you. I got a house for you. I got nah. a car for you. Nah. I got some food for you. That's just not the existence that we live in. Nah. And so if we don't claim our power and decide to be powerful entities, then they're going to continue to just take advantage of us. And it seems like that's what we want. We, the black community is so filled with black women in emotions. Black men are chasing behind black women. They have completely just disregarded the God order. God, man, woman, child. And black men had them put the black woman above God. Yeah, yeah. You know how many hoteps, conscious black folks done said that the black woman is God? Oh, yeah. yeah. The, the black goddesses. The black woman is God. <laughs> we all kings and queens. No. Nah. Man, you must not know what a, what a monarchy is. No, I'm trying to tell They you. don't even understand the structure of, of, of politics. Man, if, if there's a king, there's a whole bunch of servants in the kingdom. And that's what I was just about to say. If we all kings and queens, where the servants at? White people. <laughs> <laughs> White people. Lord have mercy. I'm waiting man. on the day for Jesus to return. And when Jesus returned, all these all white these black, all the white people going to hell, the black people going to heaven. Nah, they're gonna be my servants. A white people gonna be slaves. Now I'm gonna be king. I'm gonna be the master of all these white folks. Oh my goodness. I don't see nowhere in the Bible where it talk about uh black people are, are more superior. That's because you're reading the Bible wrong. Oh, okay. The Bible is written by black folks for black folks, and it was co-opted by white folks, and they used it against <laughs> black folks so that white people could be in power. That sounds like a whole bunch of white black bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing. If you go based on geographics or whatever, the Bible was written in the Middle East and it was written in like it was all the areas were from the Middle East to Africa. Mm-hmm. And so I can accept the fact that it, it might have been co-opted by European ideologies. I can I can understand that. But I cannot understand that my my physical location my physical presence, I completely ignore that and sit there and say that I'm predetermined by something that happened 1,500 years ago. Man, I think people got the Bible all wrong. I think that people use the Bible to fit whatever narrative that they want to speak. And if you just take it for what it is and stop trying to put your extra sauce on it, you'll be able to see what's really going on. I believe that my life is happening right now. Every person that happened in the Bible, God intervened in their life for them to do a very specific thing. Mm-hmm. Today, I believe that God is intervening in my life to do a very specific thing. And so I'm going to tell my story right now so I can help as many people as possible using this platform and this microphone. That's what we're supposed to be doing. It's all about servitude. You're supposed to help the next person get to where, get to the next level. It's not about all for self, like most black people speak. It, it, where the servants at? This is my testimony, man. I'm supposed to be of service to my brother. I'm supposed to be of service to my community. Mm -hmm. Men are supposed to use their strength to help other folks. 
And so when when I started off by talking to to Dr. Umar and brother of the funky academic, Mr. Army Ose Frank Pong, when I reach out to you, I'm asking for your help. That's yeah, humility, yeah, bro. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I'm willing to be of service to help you accomplish a goal. I'm just asking you to acknowledge the fact that I'm trying to do the work. Say. And that's that 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 speaks to uh uh most people don't want to do the work. So for him to reach out to you and say that he's willing to do the work, that should have made you even more inclined to, to reach back out to him. I'm acknowledging your greatness. Absolutely. But you such an on a high horse, your ego is so big. Yeah, you got 30,000 subs. Yes, Dr. Umar, this motherfucker, his name is King Kong Consciousness. What? That's his name on YouTube. On YouTube? King Kong Consciousness. What the, uh, what As the a pro-black, his name is King, King Kong, Kong Consciousness. He a big gorilla. A big gorilla who is infatuated with white women. Sister, sister, sister. <laughs> Incest, incest, incest. Yeah, yeah, straight up. He's a dick hustler, race baiter who's using this platform not only to get a million dollars, but also to get all the black vagina possible while he's saying sister, when there's a whole bunch of black men who would love to marry that woman as he just smashes on her. Oh, yeah. And the, the whole sister, sister, sister stuff, he, he he speaks as though women out here, for the most part, have respect for themselves when that's really not the case. Most black women out here are on some foolishness, shake their ass, show their titties. I'm an OnlyFans model. And for you to be hollering sister, 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 I don't understand what you're doing. The what you only want. way that's possible is because they get a they get 10 million men to click on that nonsense. Hmm. If nobody liked it, they wouldn't do it. Yeah. That's if true. men didn't pay for OnlyFans, they wouldn't do it. Yeah. And as these things happen, I'm so thankful that there are creators like the Stalker family who are, who are p promoting family values. Absolutely. That's what it's all about, man, because other, otherwise we'd be out here like OnlyFans models. I, 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 know that, I know that I have things in my life that are not, it's degenerate behavior, but I try my best not to promote that ideology, mm -hmm. and I hope that with work and with uh, just being faithful that I overcome these obstacles in my life. And it takes help from others, too. That servitude. It takes a community. And accountability. You, The fact that you're even acknowledging it, that puts you ahead of most people. And then it's no false humility. I know that I'm not better than nobody. Yeah. I know that everyone has a value and a talent so we can get to a specific place. But if you ain't willing to do the work, then shit, we all lost, man. We're going to be lost. Nobody wants to do the work. Work is like a dog on play these days. Hey, every black man... uh. Uh, Dr. Umar, uh, Funky Academic, Army Osei Frempong, uh, Anton Daniels. Hey, I need you guys to tap in because I believe you're the greatest American alive. Yeah, all of y'all. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive.